Hello and a very warm welcome to this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. You're with me, Narengo Fiona Muthoni. As you can see right behind me, we are on location where the random street testing over the COVID-19 is currently happening in Kigali. In this particular episode, we'll get to unpack two main things. The first one, we'll get to understand more about this program that was put in place by the Rwanda Biomedical Center. And the second thing is we'll get to look at Rwanda's innovations in the response to the accelerated rated need for digital solutions in the fight against COVID-19. The Rwandan government put in place a range of different measures to limit the spread of the COVID-19 virus and to mitigate the economic impact of it, with the goal to safeguard people's lives and health and to secure the healthcare capacity. Uh, it has been uh, an interesting uh, journey from uh, uh, the first case we had uh, in, uh, in, in March until today. Uh, and there's a lot of, been, uh, a lot of things changed over time. Uh, so it started with cases coming uh, from abroad and then we find the first one, then contacts of the cases, uh, then we went into lockdown, then we were able to find the uh, contacts and also trace them um, from one place to the other. Uh, and there was a time we're seeing almost uh, zero case a day uh, until uh, we see like truck drivers moving uh, in the region with a new um, peak of cases. Um, so later on, after lockdown, uh, when people started to move, we saw another increase of uh, cases, uh, but in a, in a moderate way, so we could uh, maybe find a case in, in one district, uh, particularly the border district at the borders. Um, and, and recently, we see also some cases in Kigali, uh, which are being now managed and uh, tracing their contacts. Yeah, I mean, you say that uh, we see it in four phases. The, uh, the early days when the flights were coming in Rwanda, then the contacts of those, those cases, then uh, the new uh, infections cross-border uh, movements of truck drivers, but also some district like uh, uh, Rusizi district, which has been uh, uh, one of the uh, most affected in the past few weeks, uh, bordering DRC. That's where we saw really many, many cases. Um, and now it's, it's uh, becoming to um, normalize hopefully soon, uh, but also Kigali we're seeing uh, some new cases coming out. So, I mean, it's an interesting uh, journey to observe how uh, we detect and respond. Uh, we tests have uh, been increased also over time. Uh, we started with a few tests. Now we are, are testing thousands and capacity being decentralized and people get to know exactly how to respond. Yeah, we're all learning this virus is, is new and uh, uh, we, we, we are learning and we're also applying uh, measures as we move on. The Rwanda Biomedical Center kick-started the program to randomly select and screen people on the streets of Kigali and the entry points to the city as medics continue to analyze the status of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we uh, actually have been impressed um, by the fact that people are um, complying to uh, the measures in, in place. Uh, the example is uh, street testing. Um, we wanted to know exactly what is happening with people moving in the city uh, with the real life they are, they are, they are living in by stopping um, randomly uh, and actually kind of, kind of surprise and they asked to, to, to accept for testing and 90% of the people we've asked they said yes yes they're actually interested there are people actually who want to come in uh, before, uh, even if they are, they are being asked to, to do so uh, so that was something positive that people really not, didn't want to know their status they want to participate, they want to contribute to uh, the response by uh, any, any way they asked, uh, asked for. Another example is of masks. Uh, before, people didn't even know how really to use masks. They don't even ever use the mask. Uh, but uh, we went from a phase where knowing the mask, accessing the mask, using mask, now we are at the level of uh, proper, use, proper use of masks. Uh, so this is another example of how people could quickly pick uh, something important for, the, for, for their benefits. And uh, uh, there are some few others who are still lagging behind. Uh, in any program, you have these people who are really coming in and others uh, who come slowly. 
Uh, but generally, we are happy with um, the way people are um, uh, joining these uh, measures and uh, uh, helping to, I mean, to stop the COVID. The testing exercise takes about five minutes on average for each person and they can get the results in about 48 hours. Dr. Anj Ndizeye with the Rwanda Biomedical Center gave us an overview of how the exercise is carried out. The target number is 5,000 people to be tested during this drive-through testing um, activity. The testing equipments are same as most places in the world. Um, we have swabs, which is the cotton they take the test with. They are put in something called VTM. And of course, you can see that our doctors are fully protected. They have a face shield, they have a gown, um, they have gloves on, they have masks on. Um, it's ensuring that everyone is safe, both the doctors and the patients. And we have, as you can see, that we have tablets for data entry. We need to keep records to know who is the person, where do they live, uh, so that it's easy for us to give them feedback when we get the results. But also if the results come positive, then you need to know where to find the person and how to do the contact tracing process. The results are sent by our team at the National Laboratory. It's uh, sent via SMS and if it's negative, the SMS is enough. If it's positive, then further steps are taken by the medical team. It's not hard to find someone who tested positive because we have the data that they give to us willingly. Then once found, they are contacted um, and given uh, details on what's going to proceed by the medical team. So the reason why we chose to come here is if you if you followed at the beginning, we were within Kigali. We chose specific sites to understand um, how the virus could be spreading and how our population is doing. And right now we are testing at the major entries of Kigali as well. And this road in particular, um, what is special to it is that it has a road from the west coming through. Uh, people from the north are coming through the same road and south. So this is really a key point that could give us an idea of what's happening in other parts of Rwanda. Even though we are not ending this here, this is going to be a continuous process and the plan is to reach other cities very soon. On Wednesday afternoon, we joined the medical team that was carrying out the random street testing and we got to have conversations with some of the people who were stopped to understand their perspective on what was happening. I am very pleased by the random street testing. I came to Kigali from Ruhango district and on our way our bus was stopped for everyone to be tested. This is a good initiative by the government of Rwanda to make testing more accessible to everyone. When I first got here, I looked around and I saw the way people were being tested and I got scared. I asked someone from the medical team if it was painful and they said no. I got tested and it was a simple procedure. The testing is very important because it enables the public to know their status and it makes it easier to protect people around us. When this pandemic began, we were all scared. The government responded quickly and when the measures to mitigate the spread were put in place, my work was affected. It was the first time that I saw something that could affect the whole world and bring about those consequences. When we were allowed back in the road on the 3rd of June, we were given the guidelines to follow to protect ourselves and the clients. We use sanitizers. The clients must have a headscarf and wear a face mask and payment is done through mobile transactions. I have come to Kigali. I have someone I'm going to visit. I like this program that has been put in place. It shows that the government cares for us and it is putting forward all measures to safeguard the public from getting the COVID-19 pandemic. The testing is very effective and we are confident 
that if there are other outbreaks, we can be prepared. This virus is all over the world and the public needs to play their role by washing hands, use of sanitizers and wear face masks and make sure that we do not infect people around us. In other parts of the world, information technology has been deployed by authorities, mainly for contact tracing, which has been vital in slowing down infections. Furthermore, the government of Rwanda launched the use of robots in the fight against COVID-19 in a move aimed at reducing contact between medics and the patients. Uh, there, there, there are many. They are still coming. And the one I recall quickly is uh, uh, communication from... Uh, the awareness and messaging that were used by uh, the police uh, to give messages using drones, for example. Uh, we are also using some different IT solutions in uh, data management, um, but also in laboratory sample collection and, 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 and testing. So this is an evolving um, kind of um, programs in response to COVID that every day there's something new being machines, being tools, being um, how you communicate results. Uh, we, we, now we're using SMS, people are getting results without uh, waiting time. Um, the, the sample collection on the streets, we're using different methods to, to collect sample quickly. And also within the lab, how we test the samples. Uh, we are pulling sample together and uh, uh, we, we are testing uh, thousands instead of hundreds we, within just uh, this pooling system. Uh, so th these robots are actually a partnership between Minister of Health, Minister of uh, ICT, Rwanda Biomedical Center, and UNDP. Uh, so we, we worked with these partners to uh, have this technology in place. And uh, so far we have five robots uh, that are uh, in, in different treatment centers. Uh, we hope to expand this as we move on with uh, our partners. And uh, for me, the, the cost, the most important thing is to save lives and there's no cost for life. The, the robots were introduced because we've seen statistics from other countries where COVID started. And you'll see that doctors were the most infected uh, in, in all the countries, from China to Europe to America to even Africa. They are so exposed because they move a lot. They, they are in touch, uh, they are close to patients uh, in, in, in many ways. Uh, so robots are actually coming in to cut those uh, transmissions for, from patients to doctors and, uh, and nurses. And, and those actually were serving food and drinks. Uh, and that's the main reason we are interested to introduce robots, so they can protect our personnel. But also we can easily and uh, speed up the uh, exercise of patient care, detecting like symptoms like fever and, and, and others. So I'll say that robots are coming in to help doctors to do their job comfortably um, and also keeping the records and information for patients in a safer way and smart uh, paperless documents and uh, interaction can be easier. That brings us to the end of this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, feel free to write to us on Twitter at CNBC Africa or you can tag me directly at Fimuthoni. You're with me, Naringua Fiona Muthoni. Thank you so much for watching.